Hi guys, thanks for joining me. So in this tutorial we're going to be doing a make it with and we are going to be making this very strawberry and we're going to be making it with the large beach template and the small ivy template. What I'll do as always I'll quickly run through tools, equipment and uh, all the bits that you need and then we'll jump straight in and get the project started. So what I'm going to be using for this project is a piece of felt square and this is just a commercial piece of felt and you want it to be slightly bigger than the beech leaf template and this is three inches by three inches square. The wall that I'm going to be using is our bright red moss and our ginger colour. As always, I'm going to be working on my foam surface with my flat mat and felt topper. I've got my two needles, my 40 spiral and my 38 spiral. A couple of little extra things because it really depends what you want to do with this. But I'm going to be showing you how to make this key ring. Um, so I've got a split ring, 25mm split ring, and I've got a couple of jump rings as well. There is another way that you can achieve this by using um, a 20 gauge wire so I'll show you that during the tutorial as well. Extra bits of equipment I've got my trusty pocket scale, I've got some pliers, some scissors, I've got a green sharpie, my awl and I'll probably be, be using a multi-punch. So that's basically everything that I'm going to be using to make this project. So we're going to hop straight in and make our very strawberry. I'm going to begin by making the large beech leaf template in the bright red. And I have weighed out 1.5 grams, so one and a half grams of our bright red wool. I'm going to be using my 40 spiral needle which is my lightest needle and if this is one of the first projects you're sort of undertaking with felting templates then one thing to point out sometimes the instinct is to stuff all of the wool in the template and then felt from the middle um, and sort of bring it all out to the outsides and it seems a little counterintuitive but that's not what you want to do what you want to do is start from the outside of the template and work towards the middle. And the way that I do that is grab yourself a piece of fluff and let it overhang the edge of the template. Then take your needle and just very lightly tack the middle of this around the line of your template edge and I am tacking this very very lightly you can see I've just got a few fibers just there just holding it to the surface and that will help your um, your project sort of stay in place as you're felting but we don't want to drive into our mat we don't want to attach the fibers too severely so I'm going round and just putting in that first edge, grabbing another little bit of wool, putting it on the next edge and going round. Just going to bring these in at the tip, a little bit of overlap and everything that I'm doing is very very light. All we're doing at the moment is just getting some fibres down so my next bit here, just pull off a piece that'll fit and go round the edge of the template. So that's, and you can see I've got nothing in the middle at the moment, but we're just going to get those edges in. All of it still nice and frizzy, not felting down at all at the moment. Still got a fair old bit so I'm going to pop some more straight in the middle and just allow these 
frizzy edges to overlap what I've done there. A few tacking stabs all over and then start working all over the, the template. And that sort of bend as you bring those fibres back into the template will help you get a nice strong edge. So what we're looking for is a nice even covering. I need a little bit more in my centre. So I just pop some down right in the middle. That's better. So what I'm going to do is just work over the template and I have been stabbing very, very lightly because what you what you want is for it to just be holding on to your surface. We don't want to have to try and rip this up. So once you've got an even layer all over, just tickle it off very lightly and you can see it's all thick and fuzzy, but that's okay. I've still got a bit more over here. So pop it back into the template. Establish those edges again. And then at this point, if you wanted to, you could come in with a multi-tool. I don't actually <laughs> I don't actually recommend using a multi-tool inside a template, but I'm going to. <laughs> so I use the multi-tool just for this sort of middle bit. I don't go too close to the edges. And I'm again I'm going very, very lightly. I'm just bouncing. As soon as I feel the density of that flat mat, I'm stopping. You know, this doesn't need to be hard work. And then all around the edges, just to bring that in line with the felting we've done in the centre. So we're still not, we're still not super firm. But we're starting to compact down. And at this point again, just going to check over, I've got a little thin spot just on that edge there. So I'm going to bring in a, just a pinch. And again, overhang. And then bring those fibres in. That's about the second pass. You can see the shape is really starting to define now. But again, it's not really stuck to my surface. So there's our second pass. Back into the template for a third. all over those edges, multi-tool the middle and you can absolutely do this with just a single needle. I'm still using my 40 spiral which is my light needle um, with our wool particularly. You don't need an aggressive needle, the wool felt really really well. So there, and back around the edges again. And you may have noticed that I still, I haven't turned my project over. I'm keeping the same side facing the mat. 
and there is a reason. <laughs> Oops, there we go. So I felted it down again. Uh, you probably can't see it as well at the moment, but this is the side that we've been working on, and this is the side that has been facing the mat. And you can see it's a lot neater, it's a lot smoother. So we're going to keep that facing the mat. So what I'm going to do now is I felt it really quite aggressively using my multi-tool and I'm taking it out of the template for this because I'm going all over it including the edges now if you don't have one of these multi-tools that's absolutely fine just keep going over it inside the template I'm doing that for speed just checking my thickness all over now what that will have done if you if you look it's flattened out the felt and made it slightly bigger than the template so when we put it back in the template now I'm going to push it down in the middle and I don't know if you can see but by doing that you get this sort of curl up around the edges of the template. And that's good, that's what we want, is that little bit of curl, because using a very straight needle, we're going to put that curl straight back down into that edge. Like so. And that just puts a little bit of extra fiber in those edges and makes them just that little bit stronger. There. I'm going to go over with my multi punch again. And again, really lightly. If you drive um, and you're putting a lot of pressure onto your needles, all you're going to do is push the fluff out into whatever surface you're working on. The flat mat is, is great for, um, for the templates because you can really feel the denseness of the mat um, and it gives you a really good sort of reference to you know where you are. So all the way around with my needle. And you can see now that, you know, this is really starting to thin down and smooth out. There's that lovely surface that's been facing the mat the whole time. Now you've got options from here. You can iron it to make it extra smooth. Um, you can carry on felting it. Uh, I'm going to carry on felting because what I want to do is show you exactly how you get that lovely smooth finish. Um, unfortunately what that takes is time. <laughs> so I'm going to go over this again. And then around the edge with my needle, my single needle. And I haven't swapped up from a 40 spiral, I'm doing everything on my 40 spiral. It it does mean that you do a little bit more work. It's, it doesn't felt so aggressively, but it does give you time to work with your wall. And especially on things like petals, where you want to do something very thin and very delicate, you really don't want an aggressive needle. And the more this firms up, the less it will stick to your surface. Now obviously I'm using a, a natural coloured topper on the flat mat, um, mainly because if I used red you wouldn't see it. <laughs> I think I did that in, in one of my other videos, um, just after I brought out the flat mat, I think I was doing oak leaves or something, and I was doing a brown leaf using the brown topper, which is what it's, uh, which is why we have all of the different coloured toppers, but it was not very good for video. <laughs> So now I contrast. 
Okay, so I am just about done. And you can really see that this is compacting in that template. We've got a really nice firm felt. For tutorial purposes, um, I will move on, but there you can see there's the side that we've been working on. There's the lovely side that's been facing the flat mat. So one last pass, and on this pass, this sort of final pass, go over it with my multi-tool. And this time I am going to turn it over and very, very lightly, so, so lightly, just tap back. And that's all we need to do. If your edges are a little frizzy, don't worry, um, because obviously this is going to be made a little bit more 3D, you can see. So your edges are not absolutely paramount to be crisp um, and, um, and sort of really sharp at the moment because we are going to be using um, the fuff uh, around the edges to attach to the felt. So that's your strawberry base shape. And for the leaf template, it has a, a roundy bit and it has a pointy bit. And the pointy bit is the bit that will point down and the roundy bit is the bit that will be at the top. <laughs> In my head, that made sense. <laughs> I don't know if that actually translated very well, but we'll see. So this is going to be the bottom of the strawberry and this is the top of the strawberry. So the next thing I'm going to do is add the little pips and seeds to my strawberry. So, I've got a ginger colour. You might want to carry on going over this maybe two or three more times, you know, to make it really super firm. You can also, as I mentioned before, just glide an iron um, over the surface just to smooth it out uh, if you wanted. I'm not going to. I'm going to use it like this. Ginger, this is our ginger colour. And to make the little pips. You could also actually use seed beads, couldn't you? That would look quite nice too if you wanted a bit more of a um, beady pipped strawberry. But I have fluff, so, <laughs> so that's what I'll use. Tiny, tiny little bit, really, really small. Probably even less than that. That's what I'm using. Roll it in your fingers and then really roll it so it's nice and sort of little ball like that. And then a few tacking stabs just to hold it in place. And now I am using that driving action. If you have a needle um, that isn't very thin, it may be a little too aggressive. So um, you're just you're going to have to sort of try it. Um, I suggest a test piece first. But another little ball. Figure out where you're going to put it. And then drive it in and it is rinse and repeat and use varying amounts of um, of wool. You want some little ones as well. So I'm not going to sit here and do all, um, you know, however many of these there will be on camera because that would be boring. <laughs> So we're going to do that 
all over. That one's actually a little bit big. I'm not liking that now. <laughs> but that's okay because I'm just going to lightly, lightly tease it out. Maybe not so lightly. A <laughs> little bit of a felt over there. And look, it's like it never happened. <laughs> So work over your strawberry, um, that's kind of what I'm using is just, I don't even think the pocket scale um, <laughs> would measure it, but little light, a couple of little light stabs just to get it in place and then knock it through. And if you felt too hard, you will actually um, push your little thing straight out the back. I've done that loads. <laughs> so there. But you embellish this um, however you want. I mean, you can use felt, you can use beads, um, you could use, um, what's the, oh, what's the, th the straw, uh, no, that's a strawberry. <laughs> oh, it's all going badly now, isn't it? What? What's the word with the thing that you... Embroidery. You could embroider little seeds on. <laughs> oh, dear. Right. So, yes. Uh, beads, embroidery, felt. You could even, um, if you wanted to, get yourself a, a nice red Sharpie or a, a coloured Sharpie and dot, um, you know, however you want to do it. But I'm going to go and carry on adding my little seeds um, with felt uh, off camera and then we're going to come back and make the next part. So I finished putting my little seeds on and what you'll notice is that I have left uh, a kind of a perimeter around um, the outside and I didn't bother putting any right up here because that's going to be covered with the leaf but I have left this sort of band um, around, the, around the edge here. So that's the strawberry bit done. Next we're going to do the leaf part and this is the small ivy leaf and for that I've weighed out uh, about 0 0.5 grams and as you can see this one's got five points so I'm going to roughly, you can weigh this, um, in fact I'll weigh this <laughs> <laughs> because apparently I can't pull things off evenly. <laughs> so I'm going to get my little pocket scale in here. And this pot on the top of my scale is, um, is a trifle pot, M&S trifle. <laughs> so I'm going to weigh out... You can see how the small, tiny little increments. So I'm going to weigh out about 0.01, no, 0.1 of a gram for each of these points. And then I may have a little, um, a little, add in a, an additional little pinch if I need it. I'm just going to rough that one in half. That's fine. So, they're all my little bits. And again, as I said with um, the beech leaf, don't be tempted to work from the middle to the points. I'm going to take my biggest bit for this one and I'm just going to fold it back at the end so I've got that rolled edge and then put that rolled edge up into the tip. And what that means is that those fibres are, are naturally curving around that tip rather than sort of pointing out. Very, very light stabs just up in the top of that tip and leave the fluffy for overlap in the middle. Same with the next tip, I'm just going to turn back that tip, put some fluff up into that point, 
go over it a little, a couple of little tacking stabs on that overlap, but just leaving that fluffy for now. And again, just turning back that top third or top quarter just a bit, putting some fluff up into the point, and then allowing that overlap in the middle. And these two points down here are a lot smaller, so I'm actually going to break this bit in half, fold that, and put it up into that tip. And it's important to get good overlap. Put that up into that point. Again, very light adhesion to the surface. We don't want it permanently attached. So I've still got this little bit here, but what I'm going to do is just start working over the leaf all over. Tiny little stabs, nice and lightly. I'm just making sure that all of these, where all of these points have overlapped here, we've got a good join because we don't want to pick this up and have it fall apart so I think we're quite good I'm just going to tickle it off and you can see it's an absolute mess <laughs> put it back into the template Go around those edges. And go over the whole thing again. So it's all holding together quite nicely, but it's still very fluffy. So what I'm doing now is just going over. Oh, if you see, I can't use a multi-punch in here. That would be bad. So I'm felting a little bit and then just wiggling my template and that just releases any fibres that are catching on the mat. And it is just rinse and repeat all over. Really little stabs and that will compact. So you can see it's taking shape a little bit more now. Got a little bit of a thin spot right there. So that's where we're at. Pop it back in. And then I've got this little bit. So I'm going to add up into that point and just reinforce. And then work all over. So, yes, that's looking a bit healthier now. The clattering tool. And I'm going to give this a quick once over. I'm not flattening it out too much. I don't want too much distortion because you can see it makes it really quite. Um, quite spread but popping it back in to the template and you see that sort of curling up around the edge and that's when I'm going to go back in with my needle and just go around those edges so you can work on this a little more this will take slightly longer obviously because it is just a single needle 
haven't changed my needle at all throughout this whole project. I've worked on the, th on the 40 spiral the whole time. Um, it is kind of my go-to needle. And again, same side facing the mat the whole time. Okay, so I'm going to continue to work over this, which I, I won't do on camera. Um, it's laborious, but just go over, keep loosening from the mat or releasing from the mat, and then just keep going over it. And you want to felt this quite firmly. Again, you have the option of ironing it um, if you so choose. Um, it's in, well, it's entirely up to you. It's your vision of this, of this project. You could be making, um, a brooch or, you know, you might be putting the strawberry on a headband or there are uh, lots of things that you can do with this project. Um, obviously I'm making a bag charm. So there we go. You can see that neatness on the other side compared to the pity mess that is this side but that's okay so I'm going to continue to firm this up until it is about the same firmness as this and then I'm going to come back and join it together I've pretty much finished going over um, my leaf and one of the um, one of the things that I like to do is, is what I call a compacting technique. And to do that, you just want tiny, tiny little stabs just in a small circular motion. And you work over every millimeter of the project. And it really does compact things down. Um, it gives you a really nice finish and there's the underside so the last thing I'm going to do is just go back with that little compacting technique and I am using I don't know if you can see let's see see that first barb right there that's really all that I'm using tiny tiny little stabs just letting the needle do the work and just go back very nicely and there's our ivy leaf I'm going to put that to one side because the next thing we're going to do is lay our strawberry on our red felt and I do realize that this is very close together but hopefully you can see the um, the outline and the edge of this if you don't have any felt um, this this kind of felt then what you can do is make another one of these um, with or without pips it's entirely up to you um, and then use that as the back I'm going to use this. So just putting this on, um, this is a three inch square um, piece of felt. And for the first time, I'm going to use my 40, no, my 38 spiral. So slightly more heavy duty needle. And as you can see, I'm just catching the edge and I really am driving all the way through using all of the barbs on that needle. But once you've done it a little bit, just lift and then go over it again and just work all the way round. I'm going to leave um, a bit in the top here 
so so all the way round and then lift you can really hear that needle doing the work and obviously keep the line you don't want to go sort of too off script with the shape so just catching that sort of end five mil and then lift and you can see that I've got all of this fluffy focus coming out the back here which is fine so once you've got it pretty well attached you can see you've made this little, little pocket and then you can use whatever little bits of wool that you've got left or that you know your little scraps and just stuff your pocket you know you don't want to cram fill it but you want it to get a nice sort of dome dome shape and then seal it up by going around the top like so and you really want to make sure that this part up here is very well attached particularly if you're making a bag charm because we're going to be uh, you know it's going to be hanging off of this bit so I'm just going to go all the way around I think that's good like that so there's my strawberry attached to my little piece of felt the next thing you want to do is bring your leaf back in and it's at this point just hold it in place have a look yeah that's good I like that so scissors and obviously without cut this is red on red it's so bad to see so there's the felt fabric and there's my felt fluff and I'm just going to go round just on the outside of the fluff you don't want to be cutting into the fluff just go all the way round there just get rid of that bit and then turn it over and where you've got you know all of these huge fluffy bits sticking out the back don't cut into them but just sort of shave off the worst of it you don't want to um, you don't want to detach these fibers but we're just going to neaten up the back a little bit like so okay so there's our strawberry a little padded strawberry bring in your leaf and that's the side that was facing the mat so that's the nicer side and you could glue this uh, I'm not going to what I'm going to do is just leave a little bit of the red right at the very top. You can see that the leaf has that sort of natural um, 
dent. And 40 spiral again. Completely driving right through. But just in this little bit, don't be tempted to try and attach it all the way down and round. We're just driving in that centre bit. And the reason for that is that when you do that, it makes the leaves curl and stand off from the strawberry a little bit, which adds to the dimension. So adding the leaf and then you'll end up with something that looks like that. So you get this really nice sort of dimension on it. The next thing that I will do is get my green sharpie. This is just a bog standard uh, green sharpie. And I find that it works quite well on the moss colour. And I'm just going to run it ever so lightly in that uh, indent that we've just made. And just very lightly out each of the um, pokey out bits. <laughs> there, like that. And you could add these lines with um, a darker coloured fluff. You, you absolutely could do that. Um, I'm just going to draw it on. <laughs> But if you are going to add the shading, um, not Sharpie shading, but um, fluff shading, then you want to add the shading before you attach the leaf. So I'm just going to go back through and I'm going to follow that line that I just drew ever so lightly with my driving needle and just create that lovely kind of 3D embellishment on top of that strawberry and that looks great so I'm really happy with that what is going on over there a oh, bit of fluff there we go so there's our strawberry there's lots of things that you can do with this from here as I mentioned before you could stick it on a card you could use a mag me and turn it into a fridge magnet. But we're making a bag charm, so. Oh, I did forget. I was going to try not to forget, but I did forget. So I will quickly recap now. If you don't have these jump rings and things, what you can do, and I'll have to talk you through it um, a little bit, but if you make your, your pocket and as you're making your pocket, if you take a wire and create a loop, like this, then felt, your, the bit that stuffs this, the stuffing, felt the stuffing. Let me grab a bit more wool around the loop. So what I've all I've done is I've just got a bit of my stuffing, put the wire down, bring the sides over and felt like that. This kind of creates, it, it will hold that wire in place. Then what you can do is uh, stuff that in your strawberry. When you come to do the closing up, you obviously have to be careful of the wire poking out the top, so be mindful of that. But what you can then do is with this 
poking out the strawberry you can um, you can create a hook like that so you can hang it on things you can you know sort of double it back around snip it off and then you've created a loop um, to which you can attach a split ring but that's another option Alternatively, you can use this um, loop with the stuffing and go that way. So you do all, all the same at the top up here, but you actually leave it open at the bottom rather than the top and then stuff that way. And then you can have this in uh, you know a plant pot or you, know, you can stick it in an arrangement so there's lots of lots of options for fluff on a wire there so but I'm going to continue making the bag charm and to do that I want to make sure that I've got a really good really firm bit I'm going to get my awl and I'm going to make a hole. You don't want to make it too close to the top, so I'm going to make it probably about 5mm down. And just poke that through. Make sure I've got a good, a good hole there, you can see. If my camera will focus, there we go. And then we're going to need one of those jump rings, which I did casually fling <laughs> across the desk. Here we go. Right. For those of you who haven't used jump rings, you've got this. Um, gap here and you're going to need pliers so you hold one side and the other and you just open it up like that and then the trick is to get this <laughs> through that hole Oh, that whole looped wire option is, is looking a lot more, <laughs> a lot better now. <laughs> so, I will try and keep this on camera, but generally these things are not kind to me. Uh, oh, oh my God, look, he just went straight through. Look at that, straight in. First time. Get in. <laughs> For those of you who have not seen my saga of the merry mistletoe ribbon <laughs> okay so once so you've got it open grab the um the pliers again and you just bring them back together and you're pushing them together this way as well as twisting them back together. So it might be easier if I show you on just one. So you have it open. And then to close it, you just wanna hear that little snap as those two ends just click and then they'll line up. And you always push it just past a little bit and then it springs back into place. So because we've got that first one on, I'm gonna put on a second one. There. Which was incredibly foolish of me because now I have to put the split ring on. <laughs> Let me just open that back up a minute. 
and then I'm just going to grab my split ring and put that on and then close it up. If you have, I suppose you could have just one ring. It depends. Sometimes it, it lies better against the bag with the two. You could even do a little bit of chain. You know, there's there's so many things that you can do with that. But there are my very strawberries bag charms. And that's it. That's the project. That's the make it with using the large beech leaf and the small ivy leaf lots and lots of little options you know the sun is shining at the moment so what a lovely time to make such a summery make i hope you have enjoyed the very strawberry make it with project uh, do consider subscribing to the channel hit that little bell icon that will notify you when i upload new projects we do have an amazing facebook group with lots of uh, fun frolics and fluff going on over there so do consider joining us. Uh, there's lots of makes, lots of craziness. Thank you very much for spending your time with me today. And I wish you all a very crafty day.